okay, so, hang on. He's doing this as a reaction to not actually being married to the woman he wanted to marry before, because he's, uh, like, <laughs> this sounds like soap opera level stuff. <laughs> What's up, cool people? My name's Matt. Welcome back to our Bible study. Okay. So, looking at Judges 15, we're still looking at Samson's story here. Uh, last chapter, he wanted to marry a Philistine woman. Uh, the The ceremony was all kinds of prepared and stuff like that. Um, he was throwing a party beforehand and made a riddle for some of the young men. These young men, all being Philistines, apparently, they pressured his soon-to-be wife, uh, or I guess I should just say his fiance. They pressured his fiance into getting the answer from him because otherwise they were gonna lose some stuff. It was it was kind of a bet as well as a riddle. Uh, so they were gonna lose lose out <laughs> if they didn't get the answer to this riddle. So they pressured her to get the answer from him. He finally caved in on the last day and told her, and then she told them, and they got it. But he was upset because she was the only person he had told, so clearly they had gotten the answer from her. So, yeah, I mean, he still kept his word, but was so upset that he stormed off and never wound up actually getting married to that Philistine woman. So, that's really all the more we get for context leading into this chapter. Oh, other than the Philistines are currently, like, ruling over Israel, or at least a significant part of it. So, anyway, that, that's why the Philistines are kind of a key component to this. So, um... Not really much else to say context-wise, so Judges chapter 15, here we go. Later on, during the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat as a present to his wife. He said, I'm going into my wife's room to sleep with her, but her father wouldn't let him in. I truly thought you must hate her, her father explained, so I gave her in marriage to your best man. But look... Her younger sister is even more beautiful than she is. Marry her instead. And that's why the previous chapter is some important context, because otherwise we'd be like, okay, wait, what? Uh, what? What is all this, you know, marriage stuff going on that seems so confusing? Well, he stormed off, seemingly not wanting to marry the woman that he was engaged to. But then he comes back and said, first off, calls calls her his wife and then says, you know, he's going to sleep with her. But his father explains that he basically gave her in marriage to the best man because he genuinely thought that Samson hated her and didn't want to marry her anymore. So, um, but then I guess because of him feeling bad, he kind of says, uh, all right, but he, here's her younger sister. Look, she's even prettier than your, you know, th than the woman that you were going to marry. So anyway, um, all right. Verse three. Samson said, This time I cannot be blamed for everything I am going to do to you Philistines. Then he went out and caught three hundred foxes. He tied their tails together in pairs, and he fastened a torch to each pair of tails. Then he lit the torches and let the foxes run through the grain fields of the Philistines. He burned all their grain to the ground, including the sheaves and the uncut grain. He also destroyed their vineyards and olive groves. Okay, so, hang on. 
he he's doing this as a reaction to not actually being married to the woman he wanted to marry before because he's st- uh, like <laughs> this sounds like soap opera level stuff <laughs> but um so yeah he does this thing with the fox's tails and basically setting a bunch of the philistine grain fields on fire um I, presumably as a reaction to the whole situation with uh, his ex fiance, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, so really all of that was caused by them somewhat conspiring with each other to solve his riddle, which was what made him mad in the first place, which caused all this complication. So I guess that's kind of why he pins that on the Philistines. At least that's the best explanation I could come up with. Um, but anyway, um, so after all those grain fields get destroyed, we get to verse six. Who did this? The Philistines demanded. Samson was the reply. Because his father-in-law from Timnah gave Samson's wife to be married to his best man. So the Philistines went and got the woman and her father and burned them to death. Okay, hold up. Oh, her father. Okay, I missed that detail. I thought it was his father explaining that up there. Okay, that makes even more sense then. Because her father would have been Philistine as well. Okay, that, 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 that makes way more sense out of this whole situation. <laughs> anyway... Uh, bu- 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 and so since he did that because of what happened with the marriage, uh, the Philistines take it out on the woman and her father for bringing all this trouble on them. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Then verse 7. Because you did this, Samson vowed, I won't rest until I take my revenge on you. So he attacked the Philistines with great fury and killed many of them. Then he went to live in a cave in the rock of Etam. Etam? I don't know. The Philistines retaliated by setting up camp in Judah and spreading out near the town of Lehi. I'm going to pronounce it that. The men of Judah asked the Philistines, Why are you attacking us? The Philistines replied, We've come to capture Samson. We've come to pay him back for what he did to us. And then we're caught in this just vicious revenge cycle between Samson and the Philistines. First off, you would think Samson would have considered the whole thing with the foxes to be him getting his revenge on the Philistines. But no, apparently that was not enough for him. Maybe because he then had a stronger desire to take out his revenge more directly. Um, But anyway, he kills a bunch of them, goes to live in a cave, and then Philistines try and get back at him, but they have to set up camp in Judah to do so. I guess in order to be stationed near where he is. So, anyway, on to verse 11. So 3,000 men of Judah went down to get Samson at the cave in the rock of uh, Etam, Etam, I don't know. I still, I'm still not sure how to pronounce that. They said to Samson, Don't you realize the Philistines rule over us? What are you doing to us? But Samson replied, I only did to them what they did to me. But the men of Judah told him, We have come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. All right, Samson said, But promise that you won't kill me yourselves. We will only tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines, they replied. We won't kill you. 
So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. So that that's quite a large contingent <laughs> to go fetch Samson. I guess, you know, <laughs> his feats of strength are probably decently well known at this point. <laughs> Which is probably the reason there are so many that go to get him. Um, but uh, they question him because of the Philistines ruling over the area and realizing that him pestering the Philistines is only going to cause problems for them. Because of the Philistines ruling over them. But. Uh, they. Anyway. They. Go and tie him up. To take him to the Philistines. But promise not to kill him themselves. Because. I mean. I would assume at least partially because that just wouldn't be right. His. The Philistines are the ones that have an issue with him. They should be the ones to uh, bring about the punishment or whatever they have in mind. Not his fellow Israelites. So anyway, they tie him up, take him to the Philistines. I'm not sure how important the detail is with the ropes being new. Don't know if that means they would be stronger or weaker. Probably stronger because, you know ropes tend to sort of fray and become weaker because of that over time. But anyway, uh, verse 14. As Samson arrived at Lehi, the Philistines came shouting in triumph. But the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson, and he snapped the ropes on his arms as if they were burnt strands of flax, and they fell from his wrists. Then he found the jawbone of a recently killed donkey. He picked it up and killed a thousand Philistines with it. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, I've piled them in heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey, I've killed a thousand men. When he finished his boasting, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was named Jawbone Hill. Or in Hebrew, Ramath Lehi. Um, so, that might have been part of the reason Samson asked the men of Judah not to kill him themselves. Because maybe he had a plan to do something like this all along. But again, it says the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully on Samson. So, again, it's when the Spirit comes on him that he gets this extra strength. Not just because he was, you know, swole or anything like that. It's it's the spirit in him. <laughs> Which, this in particular, seems to play heavily into the idea of God using Samson to help deliver the people from the Philistines. Um, and this whole phrase about the burnt strands of flax, that's like, that just means he did it really easily, essentially, because, I mean, burnt anything like that would be extremely brittle, if not practically already broken. So, kills a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey... And, um, yeah. Then, as tends to happen, I guess, <laughs> with, uh, you know, the Israelites and significant events happening in certain places, the place gets a kind of a nickname, you might say. <laughs> or perhaps even officially renamed. All right. Just a few more verses and then we'll wrap this up. Verse 18. Samson was now very thirsty, and he cried out to the Lord, 
You have accomplished this great victory by the strength of your servant. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of these pagans? So God caused water to gush out of a hollow in the ground at Lehi, and Samson was revived as he drank. Then he named that place the spring of the one who cried out, and it is still in Lehi to this day. Samson judged Israel for 20 years during the period when the Philistines dominated the land. Uh, so the Hebrew for the spring of the one who cried out is in Hakor. Yeah, that's an O. Okay. I don't know, something like that. So that's just the specific place that became the spring or whatever that got that name, not the broader, like, town or hill or whatever that was also just recently renamed. <laughs> so more of a landmark naming kind of thing going on with that. Um, just because he was able to get water... After crying out to God. Um, so, Judge Israel for 20 years during the period when the Philistines dominated the land. So, that sounds to me like there's 20 years of overlap at least with Samson being judge and Philistines ruling the land. Uh, if there's any more time than that that Samson was judge. We would get into it later. But um, for those who know much about Samson, that's probably not going to come up because of what happens at the end of all this. But we'll get to that in the next chapter. I don't really have any other thoughts on this one, so that'll do it for Judges 15. So now we're starting to see more of how God is using Samson to fight back against the Philistines. Um... And honestly, a lot of it has to do with just, like, anger slash him just having a grudge against them. I mean, you had the situation with his wife, who never really fully became his wife because they didn't go through the marriage ceremony together. Um, and then him getting mad about that, burning down a bunch of Philistine grain fields and whatnot by lighting fox tails on fire or I think he like put a torch in between a pair of fox tails that he had tied together or something like that I don't know it's a weird situation but there was that and then later on when he kind of gets captured but then breaks free and is able to kill a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey like clearly God is using the dude in some way even if it seems like a rather, like, just wild, unruly kind of way. But, uh, that's as far as we've gotten for now. Although it seems like the, the damage Samson is causing upon the Philistines is continuing to escalate. Makes you wonder where it's going to go from here. But really, the next part of Samson's story is the part that most people are familiar with. But I digress. We'll get to that when we get there. So, as always, like and share if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell if you're on YouTube. That way you'll get updates when I post new videos. If you see this over on Rumble, give me a follow there. Should serve roughly the same purpose. Either way, look down in the description to get info on other social media pages and all that good stuff. That'll help you keep up with what I'm doing here and elsewhere. I post things on those sometimes that I don't always post here. Um, but also make sure you look down below there. Leave comments with any thoughts that you have. Um, it could be about whatever's on your mind. Just, you know, keep it civil and reasonable. Anywho, so that's all I've got for now. Hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I'll see you soon for another video. But whatever the case is, till next time. Stay cool, people.